Today I'm going to go through programming the Roadrunner 3 um, road tube traffic counter from Diamond Traffic. And this is what it looks like. It's got an internal battery that I guess lasts a long time. Some we've used for several years. There's a serial number etched into the front. This one is 21653. And that little turn screw cap is where everything is programmed and read. It's got a rubber seal. You want to make sure that's in tight when you set this in the field. But in this video, I'll be going through at least um, how we program them for doing the work that we do here in Illinois. This is the uh, program cable that I believe also comes from Diamond Traffic. It's a USB interface here at the laptop that I'm using. And they do have an app for mobile devices that can program these. I've never used it. I think I have a cable for it, but I've never downloaded the app. And this plug goes in there where I've removed that uh, silver plug. And it does have a notch, so it won't go in incorrectly. There's some pins in there in a circle pattern that you don't want to damage. And that's why you want that tight. When you put this in the field, it might rain. There's two ports. This is a two-tube two system. These tubes need to go exactly four feet apart in the roadway and it's plugged into the PC and ready to uh, program and I'll open the uh, Centurion software. And when the software opens it will automatically start scanning the COM port and the device does not have any current files on it. That would be the case with a new counter but my counters also after I've done a study I always am sure to clear them out, the data that's in them, and shut them off because I've already got the reports I want. I don't need to leave anything on the counter, get it bogged down, or have it running an active study sitting in my van. When you uh, program a study, right here it says set up and monitor. So you're going to be monitoring traffic. So you'll open that and it'll bring up a dialog in the middle of the screen. Um, right here in the center it says reset unit. This gives you all the basic study options that at least we need for the, the studies that we do. There is an advanced option, advanced setup, and that menu is what I use to, uh, after I'm done with the study, to clear the counter out. But right now we're just programming these to put in the field, and uh, you'll click reset unit. Now I've already got some data in here, and I believe this is the same counter I did a second video uh, in the field in the rain the other day, reading. Uh, the site ID is for the work that we do is what known as, is known as a location number, a county number, 084, that's Sangamon County, Illinois, and then the individual location ID, which is uh, 1045. This was on Walnut Road, Sangamon County, Illinois, Info 2, um, where you would put a city there if you're working within a municipality. And, of course, the operator is me, Joe Hamilton, my, my initials. <clears throat> the layout on these for what... I need is saved so I really don't need to click on that whatever it was the last time um, it will be again doing two lanes of traffic with two tubes doing a volume count uh, let's like this other that is on volume already and vehicles two lanes so two lanes on vehicles and two lanes on volume will get me um, the classification count in both directions finish that is, now if I close this, over here it's still setting up, says setup. This is a little dialogue where the yellow text is. It kind of tells you what it's doing at any given time. Given time. Once I've entered that program information and I hit X, you'll notice it says disconnect device to continue. That's because this counter has started a study and it's ready to go into the field. All right, I'm at the back of my vehicle. And I won't be actually performing a study on this video. I'm at home. So I'll go over a few things here. This counter has two ports, A and B, and we're doing directional studies. So we need to know which of these tubes is being struck first. And we have working for uh, the Department of Transportation what's called an inventory direction, with and against. <clears throat> and so the with direction is the inventory direction. Let's say at a particular location that the inventory direction is south so vehicles going south actually traveling from north to south are traveling that inventory direction and you know the alphabet AB goes AB so the vehicles traveling south need to 
across this counter, AB. So anytime south would be the inventory direction, then the first tube would be to the north. It would be the first tube that they strike while they're heading south. Make sure you get that right so when you're doing the reports, you can enter those directions. And I explain a little bit more of that in the other video. There's two ways that you'll, you want to use tubes that are cut the very similar length. You want to use a really long tube, a really short tube, you'll probably get some high truck volumes that actually aren't real, that don't exist. These tubes, um, I put them exactly four feet apart. I mentioned that earlier. And you can do that however you want to do that. What I did when I started doing these directional counts is I cut a furring strip, just a one by exactly four feet. I grab that when I'm laying those tubes, lay it down on the roadway, and nail it one and nail it the other. I mean, laying a tape measure out there, and I, you know, if you try and guess with your feet, and step it out, you're gonna have one end that's four and a half feet, and one end that's three and a half feet, and they're not gonna be uniform. Most roadways where there's a just gravel shoulder, you can use these spikes. You want to make sure it's secure. You don't want to go too far out into the ditch where the mud's just mush. You might have to have a pry bar to pull them if you put them in some good rock, but you want them to hold. And uh, pull the tube tight, but not too tight. You don't want to have a pinch at your uh, cabling that these go through. And uh, you also don't want it so loose that, you know, it's flopping around in the roadway. I have lags and a large Hilti drill. Whatever brand of drill you have, a hammer drill that'll get the job done. You will have to lag these tubes sometimes simply because of concrete curbs. I mean, they can be four, five, six inches high. You can't uh, just drape up over those curbs and nail past them because then the tube is raised in the road and would be caught by vehicles or caught by tires. So particularly when you're working in a municipality, and sometimes in a neighborhood, in the city, you're gonna have to drill these tubes. Anywhere there's just gravel shoulder where it drops off the edge of the pavement, you know, evenly. You can nail them, which is obviously a lot quicker. <clears throat> and then uh, you're gonna wanna chain this, you know, so it can't get away from you. Be careful what you're chaining to. Don't chain these to a uh, fire hydrant, you know, or something that you should not hook it to, or something that's private, um, private fencing. There's typically always a stop ahead sign, a, a sign that says curve ahead or turn ahead, a speed limit sign. Um, sometimes a bridge, a small bridge. Typically at one end or the other of the bridge, the guard railing is longer on one side than the other. And I'll place the far end of the tubes across from that, come across and just chain it to the guard railing. So we don't, uh, you know, I mean, if somebody had bolt cutters, I guess we could lose our counter, but it's not just laying in the ditch. You gotta watch out for mowing. Good thing is when farmer or somebody does come and mow, you're losing ro uh, rubber hose and not the actual counter you know um, but if you're in a section that's a few miles long and you see part of it is mowed I'd try and find a signpost and put it there if the grass is you know 18 inches high and it looks like somebody's gonna continue mowing there the next day it may not be the best idea to run it through that ditch because tractor will put these into a hundred pieces so I would recommend getting something to put these exactly four feet apart and this thing's ready to go I'll actually clear it out because I'm at home and I'm not doing a study. But I hope this is helpful.